Finally, today in mid-November of 2021, we stopped out at the Eastern Nebraska Research and Extension Center to sit in on Nebraska Extension Cover Crop Grazing Conference. We were fortunate enough to catch up with UNL Beef Systems Specialist Mary Dronowski to discuss some of the day's talking points. When it comes to grazing cover crops, Mary tells us one of the most important aspects is making sure you're planting the right selection at the right time. If you're planting in late summer or early fall, your crop selection will be crucial for a beneficial outcome. So if we're looking at kind of the two traditional gaps that I see that most cover crops are planted would either be late summer, so anywhere from about July 15th till uh, September 1st, and I call that kind of that late summer time frame, that'd be like after wheat, um, or even like early harvested corn silage. And in that time frame, we can either go with a warm season species like sorghum sedan, sedan grass, pearl millet, if you're planting really before August 1st, or if you're kind of after that like August 1st time period, then we just suggest switching to something like uh, oats and brassica. So this is a radish that was kind of planted in early, uh, time frame, you know, so maybe this was planted in July and you can see we can get a lot of biomass very, very quickly. My favorites for that time period is really oats and uh, rapeseed. I really like that combination because it can lower your seed cost. Um, I can plant about three pounds of rapeseed with 50 pounds of oats, get really good forage production, a ton to a ton and a half and uh, have some really high quality feed. Mary went on to say that in her interactions with producers, many will automatically assume that cereal rye is a poor choice for forage. On the contrary, this particular vegetative variant can prove to be quite effective in terms of gains for your cattle. What we see is that if we manage grazing and we kind of keep it, you know, below eight inches, we can get really great gains even on calves in the spring on cereal rye. It's also very, very high quality. It'll be about 20% crude protein, about 70 TDN. And so those calves will gain um, sometimes around three pound a day, which I thought the first time that somebody told me that I was like, nah, they got a fill problem. You know, those calves just got really full. And so that was a lot of that weight gain. But we've done uh, three years of trials and we see consistently three plus pound gain on those calves if we just manage our grazing. So the key there is just not letting it get ahead of you. So I like to tell people to do a couple things, one of which is I like to do some rotational grazing. So I like to move them around so that I can graze it down kind of hard, you know, get it down to three inches or so and move to the next paddock. And then I can just manage my moves to keep up with the forage as much as possible. And if it does get away, then pull one of those paddocks out of the rotation so that you can keep up with the other two and allow that one either to be harvested for hay or silage or just kill it and plant your next cash crop.